Becker Hill. Former Congresswoman Gabby Giffords' anti-gun group has released a new report warning that muzzleloaders, we're not making this up, could be, quote, the next bump stock because they are largely unregulated by the government. This is a shift from just a few years ago when liberals conceded that at least muzzleloaders were protected by the Second Amendment. Republicans like to pretend that their interpretations of the Constitution are based on the original intent of the words. They insist that what matters is what the authors of those words had in mind. They think of themselves as mind readers of the Founding Fathers. Well, this is what they had in mind when they wrote the Second Amendment, a single-shot firearm that takes a bit of work to reload. Jabani Williams is a city councilman in New York, possibly the next mayor of that city in four years. Who knows? He joins us tonight. Mr. Councilman, thanks all for coming on. Thanks for having me. Thanks so for the it, it, What's so amazing to me is typically when you have a lobby in Washington on a subject, lobbying for agriculture, for example, they know a lot about farming. It's only the gun, the anti-gun lobby, the gun control people who literally know nothing about the product they're trying to ban. What could possibly be the justification for banning muzzle loaders? Well, you know, unfortunately, if you had me, if you had me on every time there was a mass shooting, it might be every night. But I'm, I'm glad to be on here. Uh, what you left out is there's actually a company that's trying to jump through a loophole uh, like people do and create a muzzle that can be shot with a silencer. Uh, that shoots 50 caliber bullets. That can do a lot of damage. Let's say the DC sniper wanted to do something. All you need is one bullet to kill someone. And what we're doing now is actually trying to have a conversation before, because every time we bring it up right after a shooting, you always say, now is not the time. And what I, what I come to believe right. is that we just don't want to have the conversation at all. So how many crimes do you think in the last, I don't know, 100 years have been committed with muzzle loaders? Well, well once this new muzzle is created, we just don't know. But what you do a great job in, and it works for you, so I'm not saying you should stop. You do a great job of focusing on these single things. When we really, really oh, you mean need to the have facts? Yeah, that is kind no, of my trade. No, it's not facts. It's just <laughs> avoidance of a conversation about uh -huh. guns, and you do it very well. Well, actually, I'd very much like to have a conversation about guns. So here you have Gabby Gifford's group saying that we need to regulate a rifle, a firearm, they clearly know nothing about. A muzzle loader is loaded from the muzzle, from the end of the barrel, the yeah, hole so where the bullet comes is, out. We and you put in the it. powder, and then the wadding, and then the round, but what I'm saying and is, the whole thing takes like a minute. But, so you know, it's not probably going to be responsible for a lot of mass shootings. Well, a silencer, <laughs> it's so and a, 50 crazy. a silencer and a 50 caliber bullet means that one person can die. And we're trying to talk about preventative. And you don't want us to talk about reactionary. But the but, biggest but, issue, the wait, biggest but hold issue on. Wait, Can I say a question? Sure. Hold on. Yeah, I know you're a gun expert, so you maybe can explain this to me. Why would a silencer have, what does a silencer have to do with the silencer? Because if you were the DC sniper, by the perhaps way. you want to shoot a gun that nobody can hear so you can get away. But silencers or suppressors don't make a gunshot inaudible. You can still hear it really well. I think they really do help. Uh, no, they don't. The I, I've, sh I've shot them in a 50 before, caliber it's fine. round. You we'll know still what I'm going to do? Because noise. you're good at it. Uh, let's, let's even say I grant you that. But the biggest... <laughs> okay. no, 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 I will. Because the bigger conversation is there is an avoidance of a conversation of how the overabundance of guns in this country is correlated to gun no, violence. No, no, I'm trying to have this conversation in specific terms rather than in bumper sticker terms no, where we I make gross to. generalizations so, and we get away with that. So I'd like to just bring it back to the tangible, which here's an actual firearm that an actual gun control group is trying to regulate. And my question is why? Sure. They're, they're the least threatening firearm you could honestly buy. Sure. They're, they're the least threatening firearm you could honestly pick out of the full range of firearms. So that suggests to me the people making this recommendation literally know nothing and they just expose you know themselves they do know? as we wholly start from, We should start from the macro. Guns. What they do know is that uh, the United States makes up 4% of the population, but almost own almost half of the guns in the entire world. What they do know is that there's a correlation between okay. countries that have access to guns and gun violence. What they do know is that you are no more likely to be robbed in America than you are in London but you're exponentially more likely to be killed 
because of the access to guns. And so what we need to do is well, have no, a it's of, it's actually a fairly complex question um, as to why that is. But, no, no, but let's get back study, to the specific. No, actually, recent let's studies get, showed when you adjust for population, the number right. one thing that tells you whether a country okay. is likely to have mass shootings is the access to guns. Right. But let me, I mean, I don't concede that point because it's silly, but let me just get you back to the specific true, point here. No, it's it's speculative. But, no, no, but it's what's study, not it speculative study. is that an actual gun control group is trying to ban a gun that is responsible for precisely no crimes, no mass shootings, and takes almost a full minute to reload one shot. What's not so that's, speculative? That suggests to me that the goal is not safety. Sure. The goal is disarming the population. No, I'm that's trying to save lives. What are you trying to do? Well, how many lives have been taken by muzzle loaders? Well, we're trying to prevent that. You don't even want to do that. Well, I, I, I don't think there's any evidence that it's ever happened or it ever will happen. So we shouldn't talk about it after mass shooting. We shouldn't talk about it before someone jumps through a loophole. So when just should we to talk about it? Describe what a mass shooting by a muzzleloader no, would no, no, look I didn't like. Ask, no, no, I said, when should we talk about it? If we can't talk about it after <laughs> mass shooting. It's going to happen with a musket. No one will be killed by a musket crazy. that and by can the way, shoot 50 calibers? If, if it does, okay. But also, the, the biggest thing, which is not speculative, you won't even acknowledge that perhaps a country that has 4% of the population and owns uh -huh. over half the guns That's in the country. That's an interesting conversation, but when you bring muskets into it, it kind of discredits, I would say, your side. And by well, the way, to be fair, because the, the councilman we're talking to did not think up this crackpot idea that was former Congresswoman Gabby Gifford. Councilman, we're out of time. When you run for mayor, I hope you come back and we can debate muskets. Thank you. Thank you.